this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to kind of continue off uh, where we were last time. I haven't made any changes since the last video. I'm actually recording it immediately after the last video, so uh, hopefully nothing has actually changed. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to continue working with our scoring model, and we're going to add a new indicator to the scoring, but we are also going to be uh, adding another condition, another way to add points, just to show you that there's more than one way to do this uh, in a single time. You, know, you could also use functions, but we're just going to do it all in line. Uh, it's going to be pretty simple. Hopefully you can follow along and keep up, and eventually this will all be posted on my TradingView profile. And stick around and you can get more information on that at the end of the video. Now, first thing I want to do is actually kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to essentially name this region of code indicators. I don't like all these line breaks, these empty lines I should say. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and add our new indicator. I want to use the stochastic indicator. And to do that we're actually going to need three different variables to save that information. We're going to need the stochastic and that is going to be set to another built-in function. And we have to pass in the following parameters. Now, if you're not familiar with stochastic, there's plenty of information out there on that, uh, on how the calculation is done. I believe there's even a, Wiki, a trading view wiki post on it. I'm sure you can check Wikipedia as well for how stochastic is calculated. But in order to match what's on the uh, trading view indicators, we need to use the calculation just like this. And we're going to use built-in inputs, uh, hard-coded values for the settings for it. So uh, we need to also have the stochastic D, and that is going to be a simple moving average of the stochastic. Let me double check that. Yes, that is correct. And then we also have stochastic K, and these might be referred uh, as different things on different indicators or different versions, <laughs> excuse me, different versions of the stochastic. But uh, this is actually, I got that backwards. I believe K should be the fast one, and uh, D should be the slow one. My apologies about that. So that's how I believe that they are done. Um, if it's not how you're used to, then I apologize. But uh, that's how we're going to look at things. Now, let's go ahead and plot these values as well so that we can see what we're going to be getting into. Well, we don't need to plot the stochastic itself. We just need to plot the stochastic K and the stochastic D. All right. Let's go ahead and save that. Oh, no. Uh, what did I mess up? Oh, of course, I didn't give it a value. There we go. Hopefully that takes care of it. And it did. So let's go back to our indicators. Let's look at the built-ins. Let's use the stochastic that's built in. Uh, this is on TradingView. This is their built-in value. Let's skip to the end here. Make sure our numbers match. And 63.15 on our indicator and 63.15 on the stochastic. You can see those values that I'm talking about here and here. That's where they matched. We'll go back to the end. You can see 63.15 again. And the next number over is also 44.96 on both. So our K and our D are correct. The fast line, which is the blue line on the trading view, is the one we call the K. And the slow line, which is just a simple moving average of the fast line, is the orange line on the built-in here. So uh, I'm actually going to leave that up here because it might make a little bit more sense later on. Let's go ahead and remove those plots since we know those values work. And we're going to create a, another batch of points for this. Call that the stock points. And let's do the same thing that we did with the RSI. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video, I really recommend you should because it's going to make this whole thing make a lot more sense I believe. Uh, I know it's a little bit longer than normal but uh, you'll, you'll kind of understand the concept a lot better if you're kind of having a hard time with this particular video. Now once we add uh, this indicator now we can add the points to it and what we're going to be doing is exactly what we did with the RSI except we're going to have a little twist. <laughs> Now the RSI, we gave it one point for every point it was below 35. And if we did that with stochastic, you can see uh, we, we did that uh, 
it would have been worth more points the further it went down. <laughs> Excuse me. I lost my train of thought there for a moment. Anyway, as it goes down, it's going to be worth more points. Now, uh, I said there'd be a twist on it. I think that's actually in the next video. I apologize. I, I kind of get ahead of myself here. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on in this one. So let's look at the Stochastic K, which is the fast one. We want to give it points as soon as it goes below this value. We're going to keep this value at 35. So if the Stochastic K goes below 35, we're going to return one point for every point that indicator is below it. So do 35 minus the Stochastic K. All right, excellent. And if it is not below the Stochastic K, we're going to return zero points. Now we need to make sure we add these new points into our total points. Very good. And let's save that. Now you can notice things look a little bit different. Uh, the values go considerably higher compared to what they were before. Let's take a look when the uh, stochastic gets really low here. All right, so we can see where are we below 35 on this particular candle here. All right, stochastic K, which is the blue line, is 8.17, so 35 minus the 8.17, uh, what's that leave it at, 26.83. All right, so it's going to at least be 26.83, even if the RSI isn't that low. So, yeah, and it's a green candle. So that was give us three more. So you kind of get the idea. It's worth more points the lower it goes. And of course the RSI is lower. Let's go ahead and add the RSI because it's going to help make things look a little bit better. Let me go to my scripts actually. Add that one back in. All right, excellent. So on that candle, the RSI was not below 35 so it gave us zero points the blue line on the stochastic rsi should have given us 26.83 now you can see the um on this value let me i want you to pay attention to this number here when i put it back on that particular candle you'll notice it ends in 0.83 so that means we calculated the uh, last two numbers correctly and if i'm wrong on the the 26 maybe it should be 27 I, i'm not entirely sure but we're going to add uh, you know, no, 26 is correct. So we're going to add three points because this one, let's zoom in even further here because it's gonna, getting kind of hard to see. It was a green candle, so that was three points. So 26.83 plus 3 is 29.83. So how did it get three more points? Well, the SMA was moving up. Uh, you'll notice the SMA value is up here. Right now it's in A, but uh, let's see where we were. We were right here. All right, it's 85.59. If it was below that on the previous candle, it should have added three more points because it was trending up. And it was. It went up six from that candle to this one. So we got three points for that, three points for being a green candle, no points for the RSI being below 35, and we got 26.83 for being below the stochastic uh, value of 35. So uh, hopefully you're able to follow along with all that. It, it, it shouldn't be too much if you watch the first video. Um, but if it is, please let me know in the comments. And I, if you have any questions, I can answer those for you. But essentially, we're just giving more points to our new indicator the lower the stochastic gets. And I'm going to leave the stochastic up there because uh, I'm going to end up using that in the next video. But for now, we're good with the stochastic. We don't, we don't really want to do anything else with it in this particular video. Now, one thing I also said I was going to do is we're going to look at multiple ways to add points to the same indicator. Now, in this indicator so far with the simple moving average, what we have done is we have added three points to every single candle that the SMA is moving up. So when you're in a long uptrend like this, they're all going to have this kind of base value of three points because they're all in this upward trend. Now, uh, one of the things you may want to do is spot when a crossover occurs and that is uh, well when the indicator changes directions I should say it's similar to a crossover uh, except it doesn't really cross over in any other lines what it's actually doing is it is changing directions so it was going down so when it changes directions upward then we will give it more points 
Now with a simple moving average, this may not be the best thing to do. Uh, ideally, I would use a much quicker moving average, but this is all just for an example anyway. So let's go ahead and add that in. Let me take a look at my code I've already got done so I can make sure I do this correctly. I don't want to waste anyone's time here. So we're actually going to add these points onto the existing ones. So we're going to keep it to where there's three points if you're in an uptrend, but we're also going to add more bonus points and there'll be more on that in the next video, but we're going to add bonus points for if it was a crossover candle as well. Now this is very unlikely to ever happen on a candle that has a lot of points just because we're looking for low RSI and low stochastic values. So adding these bonus points on one of those candles probably, uh, isn't going to occur when it's stochastic and the RSI is low. Uh, that's just kind of how it's going to work out. But uh, just for the example's sake, let's go ahead. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with our condition. It's a two-part condition. And we're going to check if the SMA of the previous candle was less than the SMA of the candle two periods back. Now, the reason that's important is we are checking if this candle, its SMA value, is less than this candle's SMA value. So in this instance, that's true because it went down from the second candle back to the first candle back. So that part of the condition would be true there. And now we actually need to check if the current SMA, and I just realized I haven't capitalized any of these, and it's not going to work unless I do that. Let me fix that really quick, and then I'll explain this condition again. All right, so now we need to make sure that the current simple moving average is greater than the previous moving average. And there I go, making it lowercase again. But uh, it, it makes perfect sense. Your newest candle, oldest candle. Newest candle, oldest candle. And this is how we detect that the uh, SMA changed directions. It was heading down, now it's heading up. And you have to make sure that it moves down here, up here. That's all there is to it. Uh, you might also want to look into adding the less than or equals to on one of these sides or just having the equals to as well on one of these two just to make sure you catch all the possible options. But chances are it's not going to be equal to in any case. So that's just something I've noticed. And we'll go ahead and take a look. I've put parentheses around these to combine these two conditions just to make sure I see it cleanly. That's just one of my habits with my code. Now, since we've checked both of those conditions as one, they both have to be true. And that means we've checked for our uh, trend change on the simple moving average, so we can give it points. So let's actually give it five points for the trend change, and if it's not changed, then we give it zero. Now this is only going to happen one time whenever the trend changes direction. So. Uh, if it goes down then up it happens if it continues to go up it does not continue to give it those bonus points uh, let me change these values to match what I have in my example because uh, I want those to match so everything turns out the same as what I've started working with now we didn't have to change anything with our total points because we're adding this onto our SMA points uh, when we're doing these condition checks so everything's kind of done in line here that's completely taken care of. So let's hit save. All right. So you'll notice just kind of out of nowhere here, we have the SMA moving up because we have a random jump in the uh, points here. It's got 15 points. Uh, I can tell you just by looking at the chart, the RSI is probably not low enough to qualify. For points and the stochastic definitely is not low enough to qualify for points let's zoom in on that particular one if I can find it now oh where was it of course now I'm not gonna be able to find it I think it's this one I zoom in a little slower My apologies okay it's got 15 points and it's got five points for being green now we change the point values uh, it's a green candle. It gets five points for being a green candle. The SMA points, uh, it gets five points for being in an upward trend, the first part of this, but it also gets five points because the trend changed. The SMA went from moving down to moving up. So uh, you'll notice in these light gray values, 
Uh, it's going to be really hard to read. So let me see if I can't change this to a different color and give you an idea of what it actually is. Yeah. All right, so now you can see those numbers a lot more clearly in the yellow. Uh, on this one, it went, actually on this one, it went from uh, 10,418.88 down to 10,414, and then it went back up to 10,420. So that was our trend change right there. SMA down, then up. And that can happen a lot as the price goes kind of sideways here. So it's just something to keep in mind. That's why I said this probably isn't really ideal. So that pretty much covers it. I've shown you how to add another indicator in here, one that's multiple parts. And then I also showed you how to do uh, extra conditions and give more points on a single indicator if certain things are true with it. Now, that pretty much covers it for this video, but there is one more video and it's going to cover some really important topics uh, for PineScript. And the first one is the uh, loops. I haven't covered loops yet in any of the videos, but we're going to be looking at loops and we're going to be using the loops, as I've mentioned in the last video and this one, I believe already, to try and capture these moments where we've already got a lot of points but the price continues to go down. So what we're going to do is we're going to look back with a loop and see if our price is still going down and continue to add points so that we don't have this huge dip here um, and even if we bought as the price continued to go down as the uh, as the points accumulated quite high we would also end up having the points continue to grow as the price continues to drop. And I'll take a look at uh, one way we can do that in the next video and that's by using the loops. Now the other thing we're going to take a look at, uh, I believe that's that's mostly it, but there's also one other thing we're going to look at self-referencing. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep these points as a base value and we're going to add bonus points as well uh, by working off of this value. So we're actually going to have two lines on the chart. We're going to have our base points and then we're going to add a second line that's bonus points and just kind of show you what's going on, uh, where we're getting more points for the price uh, or for our points to have stayed at a high level for a, a long period of time. That's essentially all there is here. And uh, that's it for the video. Thank you. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you like these types of videos, please subscribe, uh, especially because you're going to want to see the next video. We are going to publish this code once it's complete onto my TradingView profile under the script section. I already have quite a few. We have quite a few followers and likes already. Uh, this stuff's still growing, so please check it out. If you haven't already, go on and follow me there so you can see when this particular indicator is going to be published. Now keep in mind, this is all, uh, this indicator is just a complete sample. It's just an example of what we're going to do. And uh, even when it's posted, you're going to have to apply your own indicators to it. And if you need help with that, you can feel free to ask me questions. But that's it for now. And uh, thank you and have a nice day.